Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I want to show you guys a simple DaVinci Resolve 15 video editing workflow so that you guys can get started in DaVinci Resolve and edit a video from start to finish. This of course assumes that you already have a clip or multiple clips ready for editing. So once you boot DaVinci Resolve up, you're going to see this project screen. You're going to want to go to new project to obviously start a new project, and I will call this basic workflow tutorial and then hit create or enter on the keyboard. So there's three tabs we're really going to care about today because we're keeping things very simple. That's the media tab, the edit tab, and the deliver tab. So to get started in the media tab, this is where we can import video clips from our hard drive or hard drives into the media pool so that we can use them on the edit tab. So in my case, I'm gonna go over here to this D drive I have set up click on videos and find this clip I want to edit. This is Road at Sunrise, a generic stock clip, and I will drag that into the media pool here. So once it's in the media pool, we can go over to the edit tab and we'll see it pop in there. Now it's worth mentioning, if you are using Windows Explorer, you can simply drag in clips as well, either on the edit tab or the media tab as well. So moving on from that, when we want to add a clip to the timeline, we simply left click and drag it in here. And I'm going to position it, making sure that the start of the clip is at um, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. And now we can start making cuts and edits to the clip. So let's say for the sake of argument that the materials between right about here and here in the timeline are something we don't want in the final video. Then we would go over here to the blade edit mode or hit B on the keyboard. And anywhere on this timeline, you can see that there's going to be a red line going all the way across the video and audio tracks from top to bottom. And we can left click in order to make a cut. That will split one video clip into two. And if we want to make another cut, we can go over here. Uh, you'll notice that wherever your timeline position is, uh, that's, that's this bar that you can drag on the timeline the blade edit tool will automatically snap to that position. So using your timeline cursor can be pretty helpful in that regard. So left clicking again gives us another cut. And now we have three video clips because we've cut one piece twice. So now we have this video clip over here that we no longer want. If we want to play back the video clip or the timeline at any point, we simply position the timeline cursor and hit play. So this will allow us to confirm that this middle section here is something that we don't want. Also hitting L on the keyboard while you're playing back a clip allows it to play back at double speed. You can also hit L multiple times if you want it to go much, much faster. But then when you're playing it back at fast speeds, you might not be able to hear the audio of the clip. So now we've decided that this video clip is something we don't want. The easiest way to delete it is to either hit delete on the keyboard, which is going to not only delete it, but also move everything to the right over, otherwise known as a ripple delete. Alternatively, we can right click on the clip we don't want and go to ripple delete. If you want to leave a gap in between here, just an empty black space, you can instead do a cut, which can be done by right click cut or control X on the keyboard while you have that selected. So aside from making basic cuts, DaVinci Resolve 15 is quite powerful in many other ways. For instance, one of the easiest tools you can use to create a transition is to go over to the left or right side of any clip. And if you hover over it, you'll see this little white tab. If we click on that and drag it to the middle of the clip, you'll notice that it creates a slope. So what this is doing is it's actually creating a transition. Where it's black, that means that it is faded out, and where it is white, that means it is faded in. So, so looking at the slope, that means it's gonna start completely faded out, and then wherever the white tab is, that's gonna be the point in time where it's completely faded in. So what this is creating is a fade from black to the video transition. We can play that back really easily by going to the start of the video, hitting space, and you can see that transition in action. We didn't even have to drop anything onto the clip. It's just a simple matter of moving these little white tabs. And you can do it for in-between clips too. So for instance, I move that over and I move this over to the right, and that will create a fade to black that then fades into another clip, like so. Of course, fading out at the final section of your video can also be done in the same way. 
So that's a really easy way to create a transition. But over in the effects library, which is usually located in the bottom left hand corner, if you don't see that though, uh, you may need to click effects library up here in the top left. In the effects library, we have a lot of video transitions and special effects we can add into our video clips. So for instance, if I wanted to create a different kind of transition between this first and second clip, I can click over here on the video transitions menu and we can just find one we like from here and drag that in between two clips. So you can see it obviously indicating that it's going to transition between the first clip and the second clip because it has this giant white box here. If you left click on it and you have the inspector open, then you can see that there are a lot of settings you can actually set for that. So so right now it's set as triangle up as a preset, which is going to have an upright triangle. You can see the top is in the top section, but if we change it to triangle bottom, it's going to flip the triangle upside down. So you can see the top is now down here, but you can also play around with other settings like adding a border in, changing the color of that border or offsetting the position of the triangle or offsetting the triangle relative to the center. So let's play it back now and you can see that the transition is quite a bit different than the original default was. So whenever you have an effect and you add it to the timeline or in between your two clips, you can simply select on the clip where you added an effect or the transition between the two clips and edit them in the inspector. If you ever don't see the inspector, you can always click inspector in the top left hand corner and you should be able to pop that open. Likewise, even without adding in a special effect to a clip, there are a lot of settings that you can add in to your clips. So if you recorded your video at this level of zoom that you see on screen, but you say wanted to zoom it in a lot more in the editing process, then you can go in here and just zoom it in manually. And once you've done a zoom in, maybe you want it to focus on a different part of the video than the exact center. So you can pan the position or tilt the video up and down but maybe you want these basic customizations to animate over time. Well, that's actually pretty easy to do as well. So let's say that we wanted the position at this point in the timeline to be right here. We can mark a keyframe with these triangles on almost any setting for an effect, a transition or a video clip. Once we click on those little triangles, it becomes red, indicating that it has a keyframe set. And now if we want it to animate, we simply need to set a different keyframe position with different values. So clicking over here, I can change the position on this keyframe. And you'll notice that it immediately creates a new keyframe as soon as we change the value because we've already set one keyframe. So now any other changes to the position at a different point in time will automatically create a keyframe. And if we left click over here and play it back, you'll see the position changes over time. One more thing you guys are probably going to want to know is how to add titles. So over in the effects library, you have a bunch of titles you can play around with here. Uh, the fusion titles are a bit more complicated than the simple basic ones. But if you want something animated, we can go down here to the fusion titles. So let's see a uh, 3D title in a box. Let's try that by simply dragging it into our timeline. Notice that I'm putting it on a different track than the video track. Um, when you want different elements meshed together in the same frame, you need them to be on different tracks. So if you have any image overlays, you would put that on an above track um, rather than on the video one track. So now that we have this little title up here, uh, we're going to want to change the text in that title. So let's left click here and we can open up the main text. Notice I'm doing this in the inspector. And it says long title in a box. Let's change that to basic workflow tutorial. And just like that, it updates the text inside of there. If you want to change the font, that's not hard to do. Just make your changes there, just like any other setting. Um, you can also change the color. And if we scroll down, you can do things like changing the text face color, the bevel color, which is um, this little border that kind of surrounds the text. So if I wanted that to be red instead, I can change it to red pretty easily and hit OK. And now you can see that little bevel making it a little bit more like a 3D text is now red. 
probably looks terrible to be honest um, so I would recommend keeping that white or a less destructive color but you can make these settings as you need to what if we want the color of the box to change well we can just drag it to a new color select whatever hue saturation value that we want and get the color changes that we're looking for so now that we have all these changes made to our title we can go back to the start of the title hit play and see how it looks so now that we have all these changes made we can go back to the start of this title and hit play you may notice some slowdown if you're doing these 3d title effects um, until you actually render it to a final video file so don't worry too much if it's lagging in the editor complicated visual effects tend to process really slowly in real time when you haven't rendered them to a file yet so aside from that you can fade audio in and out on the audio transitions tab using crossfades you can actually add those in very easily as well by right clicking between two clips and adding in a crossfade this does it for both the video and the audio but if you just want it to be audio then we can drag these tabs so over here on the left, it would be fading out and then fading in. There's also some simple audio effects you can add into your video clips in the same way you would do an audio clip. So if you add in a noise reduction clip to your video, you can hit play on your video and you would be able to see how it would sound with that audio effect added and then make your adjustments as needed. And you can also make those adjustments while the video is playing, of course. So let's say that you've gotten to the end now and you're ready to export your video. You go over to the Deliver tab. And in the Deliver tab, we're going to want to choose from one of our presets for rendering a video. So generally speaking, choosing H.264 Master or YouTube, and you can lower the resolution with this little drop down menu if you need, is going to suit most of your purposes. Um, if you decide that you want the quality of your video to be a little bit less in the output for file size reasons, you can come down here to quality where it says restrict to and set this to a lower value. But generally, if you're uploading, then leaving it as the defaults is going to be just fine. A couple settings you may want to consider changing would be the file name. So when you're uploading your video, it's nice to know exactly which video you're working with. So I'm gonna change this to basic workflow tutorial as the file name to make it really obvious. Um, you can come down here to format. Generally, quicktime.move is just fine, but another really popular format is MP4. But obviously you can choose whatever you want from here. So I'll leave this as QuickTime. There's also a tab for audio. If you need to change your audio codec for some reason, the data rate, 192 KBs per second is usually just fine. And over on file, you have another space for setting your custom file name. So I'm just going to go ahead now and hit add to render queue. So once you've done that, you'll have it pop up over here as a job. Now it's possible to have multiple jobs at once. So if you want to export multiple videos at the same time, because it's gonna take a long time for those videos to export, um, then it might be a good idea to queue up a lot of jobs by hitting add to render queue. And then overnight or when you're taking a break, you can hit start render and it will go through all the jobs in order and actually render those files for the final output. So when you're ready, hit start render and it will output your video. Now, one last thing I wanna point out is sometimes you may not want to render the entire timeline. So if you decide you only wanna export part of your video, then you can go in here to this timeline in the deliver tab, hit I where you want it to start, O where you want it to end, and then the highlighted part will be the only thing that gets exported if you add it to render queue again, and then hit start render. So I'll just go ahead and do that, replace the first render, and we get our final video output. So now we can take a look at that simply by going to wherever we exported the video, double clicking it, and playing it back. So that's going to be it for my really basic workflow on how to use DaVinci Resolve in editing and creating your videos. I hope this has been helpful for you guys. I've been Chris, thanks for watching, and I will see you guys in my future video content.